I'm gonna show you how to break 90 today in a way where you don't have to hit a ball more than about 160 yards. You just have to pick the right tees, take what you can do, hit the clubs you can hit as far as you can, as reliably as possible. For some people, that's not more than 160, 170 yards. And that's okay, you don't have to force yourself into drivers and long clubs that you can't hit. We're gonna take only the clubs we can hit. I'm probably gonna only use maximum eight or seven iron. I'm gonna show you how you can think your way, plot your way around the course to break 90 quick sticks. Now the first tee, you just wanna have a very stress-free shot. Why make your round start with a stressful shot? Let's go stress-free, get this in play, and we'll just plan our way around this course, shot by shot, easy game. Now watch is gonna be a convenient way to just check front, middle, and back without getting too preoccupied on the pin. Majority of the time you wanna be playing middle to back distance. A lot of people end up short. I was watching a hole the other day on this course. Everybody's 10 yards, 20 yards short of the green. Play to the back edge of every green. That's what we're going to do today. I've got 207 yards to the back edge. Now, I don't have a 207 yard club today. So I'm going to hit something to the right because we have bunkers on the left. I think I can chip something onto the green reliably, maybe from 50 yards or so. Sometimes you want to avoid those shots if you can't hit them and lay them back to a distance you can hit. I wouldn't necessarily advocate going 100 yards, 100 yards, but you can. But play it and adapt it to the way you play. So for this one, I think I'm going to go with the 8-iron again. And we're going to leave a pitch shot onto the green from the right, opening up the green, not going left. So we just picked that big-ass tree over there. We aim it at that, give us a nice thing to aim at. It's going to open that green up really nicely for us. Okay, I pulled it a bit to the left, a little draw on it, and it's set up beautifully, chip and punch. The tee shot went 168 yards. This next shot, according to the watch, has gone 156. So we've hit two shots under 170 yards, and we've got a pitch shot up here. Now, I always say, let's try to get rid of the 60 degree in your bag if it's really causing you trouble. A lot of people, you know, have trouble with it, teething it across the green or chunking it. It's a very special technical club. I'm using a 56 degree, no 60 degree today. And with this, you can do a lot of things. But when we want to break 90, we just want to get it on the green. Just get it on the green. Don't be greedy, get it on the green. As a break 90 player, I want you to make these putts. Don't pick them up as gimmies, because these, when you get down to the 80s into the 70s, you really want to be confident over these. For when you're playing real games, competitions, match plays. You don't want to be nervous. A lot of people just come and take these away or just stab them with one hand. You want to make these, but don't be cute. Don't be cute. Often if you're playing Bermuda greens, there may be some break. A lot of people playing bent grass greens and bent grass greens, you can generally just jam it pretty straight in the back of the jaw. Nice and aggressive, not tentative. Tentative is deceleration and the ball goes. You want to hit the back of the cup with the ball just like that. Don't be too cute. Now, I know what you think. Here comes Matty Boom Boom, number one Lithuanian golf YouTuber, playing his short irons, how easy. That's not the point, you know, you can look at these concepts and you can say, hey, I hit the ball that distance or I hit my club that distance reliably. I, look, it actually works. I can plot my way around a golf course. Now I'm hitting pitching with you, not to be an asshole, but to show you how to break up the hole so that you can actually score better without putting pressure on yourself it's a par four, right? But we've got bunkers in the way. We've got dangers everywhere. I can show you how to break holes up into bite-sized chunks so you can manage a score under 90. Some holes you're gonna attack, and I'll show you those. But some holes you may need to hang back. You may need to break it up into a par five by adding one to the par of the hole because par is a social construct. So here comes a pitching wedge, par four. See if you can see something in your game you could bring take that out of it now look you could hit your 
hybrid. You could hit your fairway with whatever you want. You can get it further up there and attack this hole. There's a lot of nuance in breaking 90. Attack when you can and play conservative, cocky golf when you can't attack. This one is an attack hole, but I'm showing you how to split it up. Now to break 90, most of the time you just need good course management and the shots you have. But sometimes, no matter how good the plans are that you've made, your ball striking or your swing has disappeared. And that's where Swing Tweaks app comes in. Download Swing Tweaks app, upload a swing down the line and front on in the app. Tell them all about your game and the PGA Pro is going to assess everything. He's going to take a look at your swing. He's going to give you tailored advice in order to improve your game. He's going to give you drills. He's going to give you things to check and notice on the driving range so that you have a coach in your pocket anytime you need it. Each tweak costs about the same as a sleeve of golf balls. Now, instead of smashing away another sleeve of golf balls in your weekend round, why not invest in your swing? Use my code PLAYERS for 20% off your first tweak. Just imagine being able to smash 90, not only by two or three shots, but maybe even by seven or eight shots, just because now you can execute all the plans in your head because you can hit the ball where you need it to go. Download Swing Tweaks, get it done. Now for a lot of players, they want to hit driver, but driver can be a difficult club. That's why I recommend a mini driver. This is a tailor-made SL, SDLR, SLDR. It's a driver, but it's a 14 degree driver, mini driver. I've never hit it. I just bought it off of the off Facebook marketplace. The grip is old and slippery. Let's see what happens. This can be a reliable tee club instead of going for the full driver. Look at that, money. And these, these things are very easy to hit. That's why I highly recommend them. They're basically like a low lofted three wood with a much bigger face and a nice big head. Get started with this. Now the hardest part about this is the ability to just trust the system. Everybody's looking online and looking at the pros and the strokes gains saying hit as long as possible all the time. Certain holes on a golf course are difficult. Certain holes are stroke index one to nine. Those are the nine most difficult on the course. The ability to trust your game, trust the system is going to be the number one thing. If you come out trying to prove it wrong, you're going to prove it wrong. If you go out trying to conscientiously make it right and score lower under 90, it's going to work. Now on this shot, we've left ourselves 200 yards to the middle of the green. There's water bisecting the hole, so we can't go for it because we don't have a 200 yard club. Without fear of topping it, slicing it into the water, hooking it or not clearing the water with a bad shot. So we just lay up. Let's trust ourselves, trust the system. Can you hit a 100 yard shot? I'm pretty sure you can. Remember, back edge, 123, 124 to the back edge. On this hole, you can go directly at the hole, but there's a bunker there scaring you. Take the bunker out of your mind. Go right of the pin. We just need it on the green or green side for a chip and a putt or a two putt. <laughs> so the reason I said go go right, that pin is cut like six, seven yards from the left edge. Look at all the space we have here. I just got really lucky and I've put it to a close distance. Anywhere up here, anywhere back here, anywhere up here is fine. We've avoided that big bunker. Play away from the danger, play towards safety. This is a big area here. I just got real lucky. Let's see if we can make another pass key. What a lot of people who are trying to break 190 do is they hit it way past on downhill and then leave it short on the way back. Be very conscientious of getting it close to the hole for a tap in. But if you do hit it way past, hit it firm again, because now you're going uphill. Don't leave it short on your second putt. Well, that's a beautiful. We've got a 443 yard hole to the middle of the green here. We've got water breaking up the hole. We're going to have to just think clearly on this hole. We don't need to be heroes. This is a hole, I think it's stroke one index. This one can give you an eight or a nine if you're not careful. So I'm going to hit my seven iron. It's about 170, 180 yard club. We're into a breeze. It's pretty wide at this perspective. You shouldn't have a problem if you have a semi-reliable club that goes 150, 160, 170. We only need to hit this bad boy in four shots. We've 
given ourselves a very tricky shot. It's 251 to the front edge, that's basically to clear the water. 278 to the back edge. That gives us a conundrum. Are we going for it in three or are we going for it in four? We should decide now. That will decide this shot to set up the third shot. If, you're, if this shot is not good, obviously you're gonna go for it in four. If you hit a good one here, you have to be sure that you can make an easy decision on your next shot. And I'm gonna hit probably off this lie, a nine iron. It has nothing to do with the distance. It has purely to do with the lie. So from this lie, if I hit a nine iron, ball above my feet, it's gonna draw a little bit more. And I wanna use less loft because I find higher loft draws more. So from 267 to the middle or 280 to the, to the back, if I can leave myself a 150 yard shot in here or less, I'm going for it. And you have to decide what's your limit, upper limit of how you can reach the green. If it's too far and you try to hit it too hard, that's when we go wrong. You need to get the ball and make the decision to go for it from your comfy upper limit. Not the upper upper, comfy upper. So that one we set up well right because we have water on the left. Always play away from the danger, leave yourself a shot. We don't want to be in hazards, OB or bunkers as often as possible, just somewhere in play. That was way right, came in left, we got a shot. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? 125 to the middle, 139 to the back. We're going back edge here. That's the number we're hitting. So from 140 into the breeze, I'm gonna hit a pitching wedge, normal shot. If that's your seven, if that's your six, hit the six. If this carry of 115 yards scares you, go left. It's a much shorter carry. Pitch on from the left. There's only one bailout area and that's on the left. Look for the safety, look for the safety. Don't be ashamed of going left, making sure you clear that, and then chipping on. You're still on in four, you can make a putt, at worst a bogey. Pitching. Nice. Then we're on the back edge. We cleared the water, priority number one. Trouble short, go long. Trouble long, stay middle or short. We're way over the water there. Not a hope in how I'm going that water. It may be a long putt from the back edge, but we're on and around the green in three. One eternity later. Yes, you say action, bro. Action. Like. <laughs> Okay, I've, I wouldn't be playing the white tees normally to, to make it consistent, but I'm taking it back here to the blue tee where we have 152 to the middle and 167 to the back edge. I brought it here because it's a difficult shot. It's over deep ass bunkers, really scary, really scary bunkers. But what you can see on the left, like all good Jack Nicholson courses, he leaves a bailout somewhere. You don't have to take this line over the bunker unless you're confident. So what I'm gonna do is eliminate that bunker we're playing this like a par four. It doesn't matter. We just don't want to get a bunker shot, right? It's very tricky. So we go left, pitch it on the green, maybe get up and down, maybe make a four. Easy game. So we go back. So we've set it up left over there and we're just gonna bump and run it onto the green. We're giving ourselves lots of green, easy up and down maybe. So we've got all these holes over here, all the way around us here, and on the green. That is from a gore, or a group of gore that like to walk over greens here. In the other course around here, there's elephants, no joke. And here we have gore that walk over the greens. Beautiful, I love them. So what we have here, players, is we've left ourselves this pitch shot because we were just avoiding the hell out of this bunker. So we want to keep it low here. You know, a lot of people think it's 60 degree or 56 degree all the time around the greens. At the higher scores, 90 something plus, I don't think it works, unless you really adapted it, of course. We need to understand that we're high IQ people. We don't need to listen to low IQ. Low IQ will tell you, Matt's hitting eight iron, so I'm gonna play this course with eight iron, no. Take the gist. Matt's saying, 
I mustn't hit my 56 degree, but I'm a bomb.com with my 56 degree. Don't stop hitting it if you really are good with it. If you're really struggling with your chipping and you leave it short and you duff it and you fluff it, try hitting it lower down on the ground with lower loft. The thing it allows you is a much more ability to make a small error and still have a good shot. So, I mean, I don't really do it as much with a seven, but I'm gonna show you with a seven iron here how we can just pitch it on the front, pick a spot there and just let it roll up. You do what you do, but be brutally honest with yourself if you, what you do is really working. Now, now with the chip shot, you have to remember, you have to read the green. I watch a lot of people with a 56 or 60 degree pitch it like so close to the hole, maybe a yard from the hole or try land it at the hole, bouncing over the green, leaving themselves 30 foot putts. It's a putt. Once it bounces on the green, it takes two bounces and it's rolling. Read the green like a putt, pitch the ball to a spot that will land and roll and take the break and imagine the ball rolling. A lot of people over 90, don't know this they try pitch it at the hole and that keeps their scores 95 plus <laughs> hey this is my best friend this is my best friend pa and she identifies as a birdie this is my second best friend meow that means cat no mishai Meow, no. Ah, meow. Meow, meow. She's a catty boom boom. <laughs> now looky here, players, looky here. This is a tough one. I've set it up on the blue tee for a reason. It's a 355 yard hole, 367 to the back, baby dog leg right. Why did I move tees? Because I want to show you like a tricky decision. So we're going to hit, let's say our longest club, which is like 180, 185. The breeze seems to have changed. So we're hitting the seven. Then when we get up there, we have to make a tough little decision. And I'll show you how to get through that decision so that you don't paralyze yourself by over analysis. We're gonna get there. We're gonna do it. We're gonna break up these holes like a couple of bounces. Okay, boyfriends, beautiful day. We've just hit ourselves a 188 yard shot with a seven iron. We now have 175 to the back edge we have a huge depression there with water and to the front edge is 147 so we have to hit a shot we can guarantee go 147 now remember in break 90 this is when you need to start taking notice of the environment you can't just play to a distance what do i mean how's your lie is the ball going to fly as much as normal or not start taking note of that when you're playing after your shot how did that work out Next, we're going uphill. It's probably 175 to the back edge, playing 182, because it's uphill. The breeze has changed again, is now into us. It's probably playing 185. So we have to hit a 185 club to hit the same distance of 175. That's how it works. We're not playing copy paste to a number. We're playing to the lie, the elevation change, and the wind. Sometimes the temperature also takes some distance off your shots. So we're gonna hit a seven iron here just to the back edge, into the breeze, try hit the back edge. We wanna be sure to clear with a mediocre strike, 150 yards to get over that water hazard. And this, even with a poor strike, is going over. Now we didn't hit a perfect shot there. Not every shot's gonna be perfect. I hit a skanky little one that went to the right because I was between two tufts of grass. That's how it goes. It's not an excuse. This is the difference between someone in the 90s and 100s saying, don't make excuses, man. You just need a bad shot. No. Once you get very educated at this game, you start to understand that this lie, the turf underneath, the grass, the grain of the grass, where the ball's sitting, is 100% the only thing that affects the beginning flight of your ball and the contact with your club. The rest, the wind, everything you can take into account. But if you don't take this into account and you just see yourself hitting bad shots when you didn't pay attention to the lie, you're, you're cheating yourself out of learning about golf. Learn about the lie. Start making adaptations. Ask low handicap players to help you. It'll help. Okay.
now look, maybe you're not feeling that confident. Maybe you're not going to fly 150 yards confidentiality up there. So we're going to take a confidential club that gives us a lot of confidence and just leave it short of this water hazard to 75 yards, leave ourselves like a 100 yard shot in. Because what other option do we have? It's that or lose a ball trying to go like, no man, I don't play pat pat golf, man. I go for it. You want to break 90? You listen to the master. I've been breaking 100, 90 and 80 and 70 since I was knee high to a grasshopper, since Rick Shields was in diapers. Now you'll notice when I talk to you, I don't like to give you bad things. I don't like to give you bad juju. It takes one line from one pro, one commentator on one silly PGA broadcast to just get something in your head. You have to stand guard at the entrance of your mind. Someone saying, oh, look how that pro, how he chipped <laughs> oh, da, da, da. These things get stuck in your head for no reason and you start thinking them on the course. I want your head clear and empty. You need to come here and just hit shots, one after the other. Every shot is its own thing. Respect the course designer. Respect every shot fully. This one is 75 to the pin, 85 to the back edge. Do we have that shot? Well, we certainly have that more than we have the 180 yard shot. We've missed okay. We've missed fine, we're dry, we're not in the drink, we've put, missed it on the bale outside, but it's a tricky chip. It's a tricky one. Why do I say it's tricky? And this is key to understanding how difficult shots are. If you begin to understand how difficult a shot is, you can then adjust your expectations. Instead of expecting, oh, I'll just flop this up there and it'll stop two foot from the pin like Phil Mickelson. The problem is this, this green is sloping away from us. Anything caught on the low side here, if you don't go high enough, will run off the green. A lot of people are not understanding that. They just go straight, straight at the hole, bam, off the green. Oh, I'm so bad. You're not bad. You're just bad at reading the contours, reading the grass, the big skill in golf, reading the situation. We're going to go well right here to avoid that shot off the green. All we need is to get it on the green. Giotige. Italian word to mean get on the green. Giotige. Well right, maybe a whole flag and a bit to the right. Make sure we get it on the green. It's a tricky shot. That line at the pin goes off the green. The line to the right stays on the green with a slight backstop. You have to, you have to think. Stop and think for 10 seconds. Don't be a copy-paste dodo brain, okay? Butterfly, you're really beautiful, but this is not your home. Go on. Uh, <laughs> just that butterfly did not last. Eh? He wouldn't get off the golf ball. Okay, we, we got really, we got really lucky. We got really lucky, but we sacrificed the butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> it's very sad, but he made the flight come out. The butterfly, the butterfly made the ball come out lower. Now he's gone. Ready? This doesn't change at 400 plus yard par fours. It doesn't change. It's the same thing. It basically turns into a par five. 410 yards. Why am I going to go crazy and try bash something there? Probably not going to hit it in two anyway. Let's take it easy. Take it easy and just hit something relaxed, comfortable. Let's get in play, get the next one, put it on, make a par. What an easy game we play. One hell of an unlucky bounce to the right. But guess what? We're in play. We're not in the trees. Lay up onto the green. Par. Now remember, we talked about the mini driver. I'm going to try it again. Second shot ever with it. I'm, I'm guessing it's going to draw. So we just set up for a draw. Play your shot shape. Don't be ashamed of your shot shape. Play only one shot shape. You don't need to shape shots until you're in the 70s. And by that, I mean 75 and down. Play one shot shape. I assume this is going to draw. So I'm going to set up right side of the fairway. And hopefully it comes back in. But we never know because it's a new club, but I highly recommend a mini driver. Ooh. 
What a beaut, huh? Beautiful thing about these watches is they tell you the clearance over the water. So I'm getting a reading of 135. Over the water 135 is great, but do we have that shot from here? To the 100 yard layup is 112. I think that might be the play. We have to come and assess our environment. We've got the 150 here. I, th I say we should try, be very safe, don't take on the water, leave it at like 125 for a nice wedge in. 125 yard layup, we need to add 25 to that or subtract 25. So you've got 113 minus 25, you need a 90 yard shot. How's it hook? So we're going to hit this 56 degree from this crappy lie, make sure we get it back in play. Crappy lie, we're not going to fly the water. Crappy lie, get back in play, leave something into the green, at least not in the hazard. Beauty. Kind of didn't take into account this heavy slope here, and that's part of the problem. We have to take into account these things. The ball landing down here bounds on, so I was lucky just to stay short. It's very close to the hazard line, so that's reading the conditions. Sometimes you don't, and you hit in the water, you're like, damn, man, I'm so bad. No, read the conditions. You actually probably hit a good shot. We're going back edge here, 115 yards with a sand wedge, 56 degree. Pins right in the center of the, the green. We can just hit it center of the green unless we hit a big fade or a big draw where you have to set up for your shot shape. I'm going to go pretty straight here, back edge, leave a putt for a par. You might hit driver, you might hit three wood, like that mini driver I showed you, going to give you a chance to attack. Why are you not breaking 90 if you can attack so many par fours? Why? Because you're missing in the wrong place. You're pin hunting. You're not taking into account your shot shape. Look at this hole. We've got mega space on the left, mainly, mainly short left, right side you don't want to be. Have a look, have a look. Because you've got a big slope down there. Now you're pitching up onto the green from the rough. Short is good. Short is good. On the back is good. Little bit left is good. Back left, no good front and right pin high no good aim for your shot shape and stop trying to kill the golf ball if you're trying to break 90 you should never try to kill the golf ball never ever because it's a scoring barrier that doesn't require you to be pro level it doesn't require you to do things you don't need to do you can get around a whole golf course with a 7 iron and break 90 believe that big break when you're breaking 90 we're going downhill it's going to be slower as you go downhill. As it slows near the hole, it's going to take more break. Remember that. The first bit of the putt, not much break, but as that ball dies, it starts to take the slope more. It's like riding a wave onto the, onto the beach. As that thing moves and you slow down, you start moving further and further in that direction very slowly, just like a putt. If we make this, we are really fantastic people. Well, I mean, I'm not at Augustus. <laughs> it's not that fast. But if you leave yourself a little tap in ski and you get a five on that very difficult hole, money. We've got one of those par threes over water. It's a sucker pin. Don't be suckered into the sucker pins. That's right on the front. It's making you want to hit it close. No, 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 no. When there's water, short, we go long. Back edge is 141. We're hitting the 140 number. That's how we're going to ensure that we get over this water because if you can hit the back edge with a mediocre strike you can surely carry the water at 120 so you've got 20 yards of space there now if you want to tee the ball up on a tee you have to find the right tee height for you how does it how do your shots respond to higher tee lower tee or hitting off the ground some people prefer just bashing a piece of ground and putting the ball on it some people want higher maybe promotes right to left ball flight some people want lower up to you up to you experiment and pick what's best for you We're on the back edge, could be a chip, but the main point is to show you how to keep it dry. Keep it dry, we're going to score, we may get up and down, you might chip it in. Hit it in the water, you're taking a drop, you're making a 5 or 6. Isn't that crazy? The watch told me 141 was the back edge, this ball went exactly 142. So I should be on the back edge, but clearly the GPS is a little bit out. That can happen. 
but usually if I'm attacking of course when it's confident play aggressive play I'll hit a 48 degree try get a hole in one but you build that level of confidence up by slowly getting comfortable clearing water eliminating it from your mind by focusing on things further away and not on the problem now we're going to hit our 56 degree and with these kind of chips what I like to do is just lay down the club you can open it and grip it while it's open and I like to hit with a slightly open face of this cow grass and just hit a normal little chip ski right on the green just give ourselves a shot for par come on oh. We're always in the hunt for a par with this style of golf. You know, just get it around the green, chip and putt as best you can. A lot of practice on the chipping, a lot of practice on the short putts. Eventually they start dropping. You have a day where you don't just break 90. You don't merely break 90. You slash it, maybe an 83, 84, and you surprise the devil out of yourself. And that's how you're gonna do it. Just following the system. Okay, skabangas and scabarash, okay? What I'm doing here is I'm teeing it up on the right side. Why do I do that, big dogs? because we have water and shizer all down the right side, okay? We have all that stuff on the right that's just tempting us. Let's get it out of our mind by going to the side of the problem and hit as far away from it as we can, giving us a direct line over something, not a diagonal line. If you can remove diagonal carries and turn them into 90 degree carries, you're gonna feel much more comfortable on this golf course or any golf course, especially Jack Nicholson courses. So we've got a seven iron here. We know it's gonna go like 170, 180. I'd say I'm not gonna reach that bunker on the left. So why not just take the shortest carry and hit it at that bunker, knowing it's not gonna go in, but knowing that we're gonna clear this water and we've eliminated the whole 50% of the right side. Man, that's not a good shot. I think I'm swaying. Hey man, sometimes you're gonna hit some shies of shots. We hit it left of that bunker. We just pulled out of the shot. It's gonna happen to us. We have to clear this and let's see, we've got 330 to the middle. Let's see, this one went 192. So let's see what we can do to clear water. 90 yards. We need to hit a shot at least 90 yards to get over this water. Can we get it to, let's say, 150 layup? It says it's 154 to the layup. I'm not sure how that works because it's 334 to the hole. So let's do what the watch says, say 154 over there toward the 150. We're going to hit a le, le cow. Okay, money. money. To break 90, we have to know our carry distances. What I can do right here is I can get very cocky. I can start to think, well, I'm a big boy. I've just hit a 9-iron flyer out of the rough, so the rough causes that lower spin, the ball flies. It's pretty firm turf here, not much rain, you know? You can hear there. So the ball's bouncing on. So that 9-iron that went 186. That's not normal. I can't walk around and tell people my 9-iron is 186. I need to know my carry distance. Using the carry distance is when we come to these shots to approach the green. We want to know our distances so that we don't screw it up by leaving them in bunkers short of the green, destroying our score. Can you just the to the back? 162 to the back, nine iron ski. Okay. Now sometimes we can't putt it, even though I say as, as often as you can putt it when you're next to the green. Still, for a lot of people, this is a very tricky chip a putt would probably give you a great result. What's a great result from this situation with a big slope there and the pin over there? Because if you hit the slope, it's gonna run. If you putt it, you're gonna have to go far upright. It's a difficult shot. This is where we understand how difficult a shot is. So I would rate this about a seven for, and maybe an eight for a mid to high handicapper because of understanding the contours. What's a good result from this shot? Realistically, four to five feet is an excellent result because of the slopage, because of the lie situation. From here, 
three feet, two feet is a good result. This one, I'd say four, five, six feet would be great. So I'm going to have to chip this one with my open face technique and try clear as much of this, this slope as I can. But generally I would say you should putt it. I'll, I'll putt one for you as well to show you. Do you see how that slope just takes it? Now to me that's an excellent result. Meow, patte. So I'm happy with that result. I, I would like to be closer, but it's like I say, it's a tricky shot. You have to understand the difficulty of your shot. If I'm putting it, of course, we have to go so far up because that slope's gonna take the ball. So watch how high I have to go here. You have to go way up there like that, and that's generally gonna give you a great result like that. What's that? Five, six feet, that's money if you're a 15 handicap, even a 10 handicap. Oh. I think I just misread it. Now we do a little short par four, about 330 yards. Quite a lot of your, your holes will be this length or up to 370 on the white tees or whatever tees you choose. But you want to start breaking 90 at like 6,000, 6,200 yards and then move back once you're feeling more confident. You'll find once you get the strategy right, the tee length doesn't make as much difference because your mindset has shifted from got to hit the green in regulation, got to make pars like a pro to, oh, okay, I can split this course up like a bee house. Well, we've really made a little mess of that. We only went 150 yards with that little puffy fader into the wind. So we left ourselves 190 yards to the back edge. We have bunkers on the left, so we don't want to go in those. And we have a very small entrance to the green on the right side. We're not going to really be able to use that. So we're going to stay short of the bunker right and pitch on through that gap that you can see at the front of the green. So just a standard pitching wedge from 193 and leave like a 40, 50 yard pitch up the green like a bazooza. Look at this money shot I've just left myself. Completely away from the bunkers, no bunker shot, just an easy pitch shot. The pin is on the front. Let's not get preoccupied with that. If we hit a lucky one, maybe we'll stop two feet from the hole. But let's just get it on the green. We have like 20 yards behind the hole to get it on the green. Front edge is 21. So this is like a 25 yard shot. Get it on, have the putt. Don't, don't go greedy because then that's when you leave it short and have to double chip. If you can remove double chipping and you can get out of the bunkers in one shot and you can make all your putts inside three feet and two putt most holes, you're under 90. I guarantee that. Finally, finally a putt. Now players, that's, that's how you do it, okay? I don't, I don't tell you lies. I have nothing to sell you on the golf game. That is how you do it. Yes, I used eight iron, seven iron, nine iron. What does in your bag go the equivalent distances with that, that little amount of stress? Choose the most stress-free shots. Get it close. Get it to the place you like. Get it on the green. Get it in play. Avoid the hazards. I didn't go in any hazards. Why? Because I planned it. And remember, L6 rangefinder. Get in the link in the description. Also, watch my whiteboard videos on breaking 90. This encompasses all that stuff. You're gonna break 90, you're gonna do it now. Come on!